we upgraded to this Rise Armament Rave 140 trigger. Shortly after that, we learned that we needed a stronger hammer spring when running this trigger in an AR-47. While this trigger historically performs just fine in an AR-15, the larger, sturdier, more Russian round proved to be a little tougher to dimple and ignite. I wanted to release a video to help any of you that might be struggling with the same light primer strike issues that we did after our upgrade. So here we go. I'll start by showing you the components involved in this process. On the table, we'll start by removing the grip. It's held in by a single screw, usually a flathead. Be careful when you pull this off because there's a detent pin and spring that compress. These two things combined are what give the safety that click that we're all used to. Also note that it's easiest to remove the trigger assembly with the hammer cocked. There are three positions for the hammer. Not cocked, half cocked, fully cocked. You do have to take care not to bump the trigger. Bumping the trigger will release the hammer and could damage your lower. All right. Now, let's pull these two screws out. We're going to get this trigger group out and make some YouTube magic. Now that we have the trigger group out, we're looking to accomplish two things. Number one, remove the retaining pin that holds the hammer and spring in. Number two, don't let the trigger pin fall out. You can manipulate the trigger in order to release the tension held on the hammer. Once the tension is removed, the pin will push right out. Let's move on to a little more exploded view, if you will. Once the hammer pin's out of the body, you'll have a couple of things to work on. You'll set the heavy spring around the hammer. You'll place the combined two pieces into the trigger group. And then you can start working on reassembling this mesh you've created. You'll find that everything jobs back together just a little bit nicer if there's some pressure on the hammer spring while you try to reassemble. Once the hammer spring and hammer are back in the body and the pinholes are lined up, I recommend inserting the pin from underneath. While it isn't directional, I find that it fights you a little bit less than your hand-eye coordination is your friend when installing it from below. I've been practicing. Watch how quickly I can reassemble this. That's it. All done. Pay close attention to not let the pins fall out as you pick this up to put it back together. Overall, I'd consider this job to be about a 2 out of 10 in difficulty. While it isn't incredibly difficult, someone out there will benefit from seeing this level of detail and clarity. We aim to provide that. Now that we've completed the reassembly, we just need to do everything we did before disassembly, but backwards. Take care of putting the safety spring and detent back in, as they can easily go flying off into the wild. That's it for today, and as always, thanks for watching, be safe out there, don't do anything foolish.